Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colt, and this video is actually a little snippet from our full tutorial on Zoho surveys recorded in October of 2022. Um, in this little section here, we're going to be running through how to launch and distribute your survey. So once you've got everything buttoned up, you've got your fields, you've got your mapping, it's time to get that thing out of the door. Um, and this video will walk you through a bunch of different options to do just that. Um, if you do find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any feedback or questions, uh, leave those in the comments section as well, as we do try to read and respond to every single one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Thanks and enjoy. A um, few different ways that you can launch the survey, right? So right out of the gate, of course, it has its own URL and web page. So I could just grab this, right? I'm clicking it here. It's opened up a new, a new page. Here's where it lives, right? I have a dark mode plugin, so this is all dark mode. Um, but so you can basically run through and grab your survey here. This link that it gives you is publicly accessible. So you could just send this to someone and have them take it. Um, again, you always want to do the CRM integration. It's so not, not often that you're going to send it this way. Um, if you did want to have this run offline, it can create its own little link. Again, no one's really going to use that much. Um, QR code is actually a more and more common way of doing these, um, right? You might have on, maybe you sell something that's like a physical asset, right? And you want to allow them to provide feedback. You know, you get your QR code, you stick it on the device. They can scan it with their phone opens right up into the survey, and then they're off to the races, right? They can go ahead and submit that directly back to you. Now you can buy responses for this. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, the only times you would really wanna like buy responses is if you were doing like market research, right? But even then, like there's probably better ways to capture this type of demographic information and send to a more vetted list. We've never really had anyone go down the path of buying responses. I like to highlight that it's here, but again, it's it's a very specific use case, right? You're you're trying to gauge a certain market, a certain type of person for their opinion on something. Maybe you'd want to do this, but again, you'd want to look at a lot of different places to buy these types of lists and responses. And I wouldn't rely solely on Zoho to provide your survey list for that type of case. Um, within distribution, right? We can distribute through email a few different ways. Um, you can send emails directly through here out of surveys. Again, generally don't recommend that just because you're losing some of the data that you could get from CRM, um, but you're then also losing some of the data you could get from Zoho campaigns, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, one integration that is pretty nice though is to send via Zendesk. So if you are using Zendesk or even maybe Shopify or Eventbrite here, and you wanted to just be able to very quickly do some type of, you know, how is your customer support experience, right? How is your purchase experience? Um, you can just integrate survey directly through to those tools and have them do some of the sending. Can also do your sending via SMS. Um, like we mentioned earlier, a few different options for SMS here. Um, you know, so we're able to send it from Clickatel, Twilio, or SMS Magic. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna use Twilio, but if you already have one of these others plugged into your CRM, just use that one, right? There's at the end of the day, as long as the text is going out, it doesn't really matter uh, which service you're sending from. Twilio is oftentimes just the cheapest. Um, within campaigns as well, this is kind of a big one. You can actually distribute surveys directly through Zoho campaigns. Um, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, you actually do this from the campaign side. So if you click here, it's going to kind of drop you into the first steps in Zoho campaigns that you would follow to send it out. Right, so you can go ahead, same way that you would use campaigns to send any other email, right? You can just send it out. It will just include that survey um, and the ability for them to fill it out and complete it there. They also have a basically identical integration for MailChimp, um, but you love Zoho, so you're probably using Zoho campaigns. Um, last one here is to actually post it through to Facebook. So you can have it basically just live on your Facebook page as a post. Now, a few other little quick ones that I'll show here. Um, this is actually a big one. Uh, I shouldn't call this a quick one. This is an inline survey question. Now, an inline survey 
is basically a survey where one or multiple of the questions actually show up directly in the email, right? And so this, for something like a um, NPS survey, that's a big deal, right? The whole goal of an NPS survey is minimize the amount of stuff they have to click, give them a very high level KPI, let them fill that out, right? And just get the most amount of responses possible. And so having an, an inline email essentially lets you generate a little snippet of HTML code that allows them to click right in the email, answer that question, and then it will just open up the submit page for them to confirm it and go. Again, when you're doing surveying, it's a numbers game, right? So if you can put something in line and it increases your response rate by five, 10%, that's killer, right? Because it didn't take much work and you got way more responses as a result. Um, within here as well, when you do set up an inline, it's gonna ask you for which service you're gonna send from. Um, here, of course, is gonna show a bunch of Zoho options at the top and then a bunch of non-Zoho options at the bottom. A little bit of reverse alphabetical order there with Z up at the top, but that's how we like it. Um, so you can set up you know, where you're gonna send it out. That just slightly affects the way that the HTML will look when it comes out of that side. And then if you wanted to pre-append any parameters, you could do that here. So earlier on, when I said that the vast majority of the time, we're not using those URL parameters under the advanced settings, this is the one case where you would right? Because you'd want to pre-fill their first name, last name, and email um, because you're not sending it through our little magic button here in CRM. You're sending it through a little snippet of HTML that you're going to put in a separate email. So again, a little bit of nitty gritty, but inline is a pretty great way to do things, especially if you have a quick survey, um, because it's just going to increase that response rate significantly. Two little options here. If you wanted to drop it onto the web page, um, you can do a little pop-up right? Where, hey, you're on a page for 10 seconds, um, go ahead and pop up a survey. Or you've scrolled 50% of the page, go ahead and pop up a survey, right? So little quick ones here. Again, you can parameterize this as well if you do have any of that data in the URL. Um, and then, of course, you could just do like a simple embed. Um, so really, this is pretty rare that you would be doing an embed for a survey. Really the main reason you would do this is let's say that you had Zoho surveys and you didn't have Zoho forms. You know, maybe you just had CRM and surveys and you said, you know what? Yeah, forms is the one you would normally use to make a contact us form, but it's no big deal. I'm gonna use surveys. I'm gonna save myself, you know, 20 bucks a month. Then you could go ahead and create a survey for your contact us form and just drop it in in an embed. Because again, at the end of the day, a survey is just a form, right? So if you just don't call anything on it a survey, then it's your contact us form. Uh, you can set up visibility on this if you do need it to be private. So you can actually set up that not everybody is allowed to come in. Um, this actually is more on the side of your internal groups, right? So if you don't want people in your org to be able to see a certain survey, you know, maybe you're sending something out to your initial round of, you know, VC investors and not everybody can see this. You can hide it here. And then you can set up some restrictions around responses, right? So do I want to I'm only gonna capture these responses until the end of the year, right? So I can come out and say that this is gonna expire on December 31st. I can say that an individual person can only respond to it one time. I can choose to collect IP and email address information here as well as a way to capture those response limits, right? So like, hey, we've seen your email do this before, you can't do it again. Um, and then lastly, if you wanted to connect, collect a geolocation, you can activate that here. Now, a little more nitty gritty around the response tracking. So you can actually say like, let's say we only want that one response per person. Um, this is a section where Zoho is gonna ask you, well, how do we define person, right? Is a person an email? Is a person the URL they use to access it? Is an IP address? Is it a device ID? You know, how do we wanna control for multiple submissions? Um, email is the default because technically, you know, I could submit this survey from my house and then next week I'm at the park doing some work and I submit it again and now I'm on my hotspot and that's a different IP address, you know, or I submit it from my phone and then later I submit it from my laptop, right? That would get around the per device. So the email is a pretty common way to control how many responses people can have because again, generally speaking, other than the outliers, people just have one email, at least one work email. 
Um, you can actually set up a password protection system as well, just a basic little thing around what they need to enter to actually get in. And then last but not least, you can enable certain IP address restrictions. This one's very, very specific on when you would do this. It would really only be if you were doing it to like your own employees and they wanted you to, or you wanted them only to fill it out in the office, right? But other than that, it's pretty rare that you're gonna IP address um, restrict a given survey. And then last but not least, if you're done with this survey and you want to close it down and not get any more responses, you know, maybe you're doing some type of cohort analysis and you say, you know what, like Q3 of 2022 is done. We're going to clone the survey and do a new cohort on it in the future. Um, you could actually go ahead and close the survey through, ironically, through the launch section is where you go to close it. Um, but you can do that directly through here. Um, I will just show kind of at the tail end once you've launched it, Right, you'll get a variety of different reports that you can pull out. Obviously, here, you know, these aren't going to have a ton of data on them right now, um, but you're able to see kind of some basic trend analysis on your reports. Um, you can set up some custom reports as well, and then you can view any individual responses basically in like a tabular view um, that you'd like to see. I'll highlight with the reporting; it can be a little bit limited. I think that they do a solid job and they pick some good charts based on each data type. You know, so if I do a matrix analysis, it's going to give me this type. If I do a drop down, it's going to give me a bar chart, right? Uh, but sometimes you're going to want to go more granular, and that's where you'll want to end up pulling a lot of this data over to Zoho Analytics and slicing and dicing it there, right? So when you do start to tap out, you know, the reporting that comes out of the box here, that's going to be your first instinct is to pull the data over to Zoho Analytics.